Good morning, I'm Nicola Sokute. Welcome to our physics lesson. We are going to look at photoelectric effect. Now, in the past, uh, you had studied uh, X-rays and uh, cathode rays. In those two topics, we learned that electrons can be emitted or ejected from a metal surface when heated. Now, in this topic, we are going to see another way in which electrons can be ejected from a metal surface, and that's what we call photoelectric effect. So, in terms of definition, we'll define photoelectric effect as a phenomenon in which electrons are ejected from a metal surface by radiating, irradiating the metal surface with UV radiation of sufficient energy. The energy must be sufficient in order to eject electrons from the metal surface. Now, the electrons that are emitted from the metal surface through photoelectric effect, we refer to them as photoelectrons. In, uh, in uh, X-rays and cathode rays, the process that or in which electrons are emitted from the metal surface, we call it thermionic emission, that is by heating. And those electrons, we are calling them thermions. But in photoelectric effect, we call them photoelectrons. The current that is generated or that flows due to photoelectric effect, we refer to it as photoelectric current. Now, any material, mostly metals, that are able to eject electrons through photoelectric effect, we refer to them as photoemissive materials. So photoemissive materials are materials that are able to eject or emit electrons through photoelectric effect. How do we know that photoelectric effect actually occurs on a metal surface? That takes us to what's called demonstrating photoelectric effect. We have uh, two cases that we can use to demonstrate. One is using parallel plates and in this case in this case, a UV radiation from the source is made to fall on the cathode, one of the plates there. If you observe well, the cathode plate is connected uh, or is at the negative potential. Then there's the anode which is at positive potential. So when UV radiation falls on the cathode, it emits electrons. These electrons, which we are calling the photoelectrons, will be attracted to the anode because the anode is at positive potential. Remember, electrons are negative, uh, anode is positive. So when they are attracted, then it will complete the path or the circuit in this case, making the galvanometer to deflect. So the deflection of the galvanometer shows that there is a current that is developed. That current is developed by electrons flowing between the gap, the gap between the cathode and the Anode. When maybe a glass material is placed on the path of the UV radiation, then there will be no deflection on the galvanometer. Why? Because the UV radiation is not able to reach the cathode, therefore cannot emit electrons which will be attracted by the anode. So any barrier placed between the source and the cathode will uh, cause no deflection on the galvanometer. The second uh, method of demonstrating this is by using electroscope, gold leaf electroscope. We can look at a case whereby the electroscope is uncharged, uncharged electroscope. What observation we made? When UV radiation falls on a clean zinc plate placed on the tape of an electroscope, what will happen? The UV radiation will eject electrons. When it ejects electrons, then the emitted electrons will repel more electrons to the leaf and the plate, causing the divergence to increase. So in uncharged electroscope, divergence increases. What about a positively charged electroscope? When the electroscope is positively charged, meaning the leaf the plate and even the cap are positively charged. Then UV radiation uh, emits electrons. These electrons will further be attracted by the cap or the positive charges on the cap. 
And when they are, are attracted, it will cause neutralization, meaning there will be no net increase or decrease in the charge. Therefore, there will be no observation on the leaf and the petrol on the electroscope. Similarly, when the electroscope is negatively charged, meaning the leaf is negatively charged, the same applies to the cape, and electrons are ejected. The ejected electrons will be repelled. When they are repelled, then observation that we made on the leaf is that the leaf falls, the divergence decreases. So those two cases, or in that electroscope now, we are seeing three things. When it is neutral, or when it is, uh, has no charge, then divergence increases. When it is uh, positively charged, divergence remains the same. Finally, when it is negatively charged, then divergence decreases. We now want to look at terms used in photoelectric effect. And the first term that we are going to define is called threshold frequency, which sometimes we call cutoff frequency. Symbol is F naught. Threshold frequency is referred to as the minimum frequency of the radiation that can cause photoelectric emission. Minimum. It is the smallest amount of energy that is that a radiation falling on a metal plate must have for it to cause photoelectric emission. We have another one we call threshold wavelength. Wavelength is lambda, so threshold we use lambda naught. And in this case now we say it is the maximum wavelength beyond which no photoelectric effect will occur. Maximum wavelength beyond which no photoelectric effect will occur. So we are using the word maximum and it is wavelength. So maximum wavelength beyond which no photoelectric emission will occur. Thirdly, we have what we call work function. Work function. Here we use W naught. Work function is energy. Now, when we are defining photoelectric effect, we insisted on using the word uh, sufficient energy. Each and every material or metal has the amount of energy that it requires for it to eject an electron. Therefore, work function, we define it as the minimum amount of energy required to dislodge an electron from a metal surface. The minimum amount of energy of a radiation required to dislodge uh, an electron from a metal surface. According to uh, energy equation, According to energy equation, we know energy is given by HF as calculated by Max Planck. So, work function being energy will uh, work out work function as work function is equal to HF naught. Now, since since according to the wave equation c is equal to f lambda, we can also work out or give the formula for work function in terms of wavelength by saying work function is equal to hc over lambda, but now we use lambda naught. So work function can be expressed in terms of threshold frequency. Similarly, it can also be expressed in terms of uh, threshold wavelength. Therefore, 
from the two formula, we are able to work out work function mathematically. Now, work function being energy, SI unit is joules. But then, work function can also be expressed in electron volt. Electron volt, that is EV. And the relationship between joules and work function is that one electron volt is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. So meaning you can work out work function in joules, you can also work it out in electron volts. So generally, in this area, we are supposed to know the definition of work function, then be able to demonstrate a photoelectric effect and uh, define the terms used in the uh, photoelectric effect. This is the end of our lesson. We can meet in the next. Thing.